that's why my mom was like, okay, fine, you guys can go. They didn't know that Jake was there. But your dad snuck up on us. And they booked the same hotel as us. Oh! So we had Jake sneak out. Hey, hey guys. guys, welcome back to the Jalty Podcast. Welcome back to another episode. Today is Wednesday. We are hitting you from Wednesday, January 20th. 31st. Oh my gosh, it's the end of the month. What? You know what that means? It's going to be my birthday month. Woo! Wow, this is exciting. This is a big deal here. Unlimited chores. Like, you know, the you know, on your birthday month, you got to do whatever you want. Well, for my birthday month, I don't want to do anything. I want you to do everything. Do you want me to give you coupons for your birthday? <laughs> yeah, give me coupons. Like when we were in elementary school. Did you guys have this when you're in elementary school? On like Mother's Day or Father's Day, you get to give them like a coupon and it's like, I will do or I will something and then it's a coupon for them to use for you. That's so genius. Isn't because it? like now, thinking about it from like an older, obviously when you were a kid, you felt useless giving them that, right? But obviously now that I'm older, I'm like, that's genius. I didn't feel useless. I, bro, I felt so useless. Bro, I put, I gave my mom three coupons. I asked for like extra coupons uh, to give her because I was like, bro, this is actually cool. Let me give her more. Yeah, it's like actually genius because like as a parent, you don't like, that's all you want. You want your kids to write on a coupon. I will leave you alone for a day. You know, that's, <laughs> that's what they want. You know, parents are tired. Like, they don't want, like, as a kid, what can you afford? Like, a $5 gift. They'd rather you give them a coupon for, like, I'll do the dishes. Nah, your little brother couldn't afford some stuff. Uh, Tito's <laughs> rich, though. That Tito don't <laughs> count. Tito's rich in his era right now, bro. He's a rich-ass kid. And it's not, like, for anything. Tito goes to work with my dad, so my dad will pay him. And it's, like, not that much money, but... He's a kid, so, like, it really adds up, and, like, he always goes with my dad, like, weekends, and any days off, like, he goes with my dad. But, nah, Tito has a bad spending habit. My boy, he has, like, all the skins in Fortnite. He has crazy stuff on the game. He doesn't have, game. like, anything to save money for right now, so, like, whenever he goes to work, he like, he will want to go to work. Or, you know, what he what he also spends his money on is birthdays. He always spends his money on other people's yeah, birthdays. Yeah, Tito's so sweet. Like, Tito spends all his fucking savings on, like, giving gifts, and so, yeah, I, I Tito's remember, a slave. I remember he gave your mom for her birthday, like, uh, over a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, and I was like, "What?" Yeah, Tito, he's he's a sleigh. Mm -hmm. He's he's a sweet guy. He, um, he, he told me he told me he has two crushes in school. I know you fucking told me. Tito doesn't tell me this stuff by the way. He only tells Jake. Yeah, I mean Tito have like a cool bond, like a brother brother and brother bond, like that older. I'm that older brother to him, and he tells me everything, like anything that Tito's going through, I know it. Mm -hmm. I give him good advice too, like. I don't, nah, I'm not gonna put his business out there. Don't, yeah, don't do that. But it's funny because I think you're his favorite. Like, I think you're his favorite. Like, out of everyone in the family. I yeah, because I'd say I'm like a really relatable person, and I'm I'm like that person that's comforting to you. You're just nice. You like think Jake so? is a really nice person, like to everyone. So he really likes you. But I think I'm the favorite sister. <laughs> yeah, I'm I think, for sure the favorite sister. I think so Tito too. Tito loves me. <laughs> Tito loves me. Mm -hmm. And I I always wanted to keep it that way. Like. Because I don't really want to be, like, I whenever Tito's, like, acting out of line, like, I'll say something, but not in a way where I'm, like, the annoying-ass older sister, you know? Oh, yeah, like, I think that's, for him, that's Nelly, only because they live with each other. Oh, yeah, yeah, Tito and Nelly, like, fight like no other. Like, I feel like it's harder, it's harder to have a favorite sibling when you're living together because there's a lot of, like, turmoil that you guys do, like, whether you didn't do the dishes or something. And that builds up, so it's hard to have a favorite then. Yeah, but then that, that changes. Like, when they get a little older, when Tito gets, like, a little bit older, that'll... Yeah, like, it'll, yeah me and Joel, bro, me and Joel, when I would live with him, we were close. Really, like, I was close to all my brothers and sisters, but I don't know. I couldn't say he was my favorite. Like, as to where now, I could say, like, I don't know. I think all of them are my favorite, but uh, Joel... Yeah, you and Joel are, like... No, but I like Jason, Joey, and my, and my sister, too. No, it doesn't mean you don't like them, but I think when you and Joel are together, like... Or at least you're Joel's favorite sibling. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, probably. You're Joel's favorite. Sibling. I yeah. could tell. Like it's so funny because like Joel really, really like, like just I, loves. Jake. If I tell him to do something, then he he will like do it out of yeah. respect. Like uh, he really loves you. Yeah, like telling him to do something in a good way. Except one thing, I'm telling him to stop doing. Slap. We're him. not having this conversation. Uh, not again. again. <laughs> we are not having this conversation again. Um, you know it's crazy because like I feel like a lot of people, like my last video, um. Someone was like, I know y'all seen that vape at the end or something. I'm like, out of everyone Us? you could have ever commented that, you're not going to put that on me, you know? But it, Or, like, people will be like, Jake looks so high right now. Or things like <laughs> that. It's like, guys, that this is just how. Nah, sometimes how I'm tired and I need to help out Nat. So whenever she's like, whenever I'm helping out her in her videos, I woke up from a nap or something. Like, a clip on TikTok went viral from one of your videos where... You're driving your, uh, the brand new Jeep in, <laughs> in like, 4x4 four four in the snow. It's, like, crazy. It was a blizzard. And you don't know how to reverse it. Because when you're reversing it in four high, I believe it's, like, it skids because you're going too slow. So the tires don't get traction. 
And when you were reversing, you couldn't I was like just reverse. Moving. I was dancing in the snow. Yeah, and then I just wake up out of my nap and I pull up. I'm like, do you need help? <laughs> if you guys seen that clip on TikTok, then you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, he. Uh, people always think that, but no, guys, it's just we're tired and stuff. We don't. Um, we you, we you guys already know. Anyway, um, okay, I have a story to tell on today's podcast. Ooh, what's today's story? Okay, so I wanted that you know about this. You you're part of the story, but I want to talk about the first time that I left my parents' house. And then we got into a pickle. Oh, what was the pickle? Okay. Let's start off. Let's start so off with let's start story. with the beginning. You want to hear? I got me. you. Can you hear me fine? I, yeah, you're perfect. It's okay. just your mic. What's it? What do you mean? Your headset. You're fine. I can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay. I know my mic looks weird, but I just had to do the setup. All right. So, okay. <laughs> this is the story time for today. So Ooh. when I had just kind of started, I don't remember if I lived... I'm trying to think if I lived on the other side of the house at this point, but I don't think I did. I think I was still like in your parents' house, in my parents' house, but I might've not been. I just don't, I don't know the timeline of this stuff. Okay. I don't remember the timeline, but, um, it was like, I remember the first times I went to go visit you. I was taking like my mom or I would, or Edith and Paz would take me or, you know, because I met Jake probably like so i got my license in april right in april of 2020 of 2020 and then i started talking to you in what like october october 2020 i had only you know had my license for a little bit and back then like my mom wouldn't let me drive with my permit like isn't it illegal as well yeah you have to drive with someone at the age of 25 now it's 21 they passed the law it's 21 now yeah, because 25 is fucking Bro, crazy. Bro, 25. <laughs> 25, you're employed. Like, you don't got time to be driving <laughs> yeah, around with little kids, you know? Which, I, I like that law. But, yeah, so my mom wouldn't let me drive um, kind of, like, without her. And, like, even when we were in the car, like, she would just be like, nah, let me just drive, you know? Because. <laughs> Why I, the fuck she's risking her life? You know what I mean? So she, she would always drive and stuff. So I passed my permit with not even knowing how to drive. Like when I got my, so you have to take a test, right? And then you, but that's the written like part of the test. And you know how people are like, oh, it's common sense. Like if you drive, like it's all common sense. Well, I didn't drive. So I passed my test like strictly on reading the book and doing the pretest and like, you know, actually do, doing the smart side of things. So I got my permit. Is it a permit? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's your permit. I got my permit and I didn't know how to drive at all like when i tell you i think maybe i had gotten in a car like twice and we had driven around like a parking lot no maybe not even that i don't remember but i didn't know how to drive got my permit and then because my mom was like i'll teach you how to drive once you get your permit which fair because i don't think you're supposed to be driving without a permit i feel like you should be driving before the permit because it it, pre it prepares you for like what you're about to go through on the test i passed oh. i think the way you're but legally supposed to do it is like permit and then you learn yeah but that's drive. so weird because you get the permit and then now they hand you the wheel to the car and now you have to figure out how to drive well, right no, it's not like that so you're supposed to get classes that's why oh, you need oh okay okay that makes it's more because sense you didn't then. go through this process yeah, i didn't but you basically have to pay for classes right in order to even get your license if you're under the age of what is it 17 and a half Six. 17 and a half no i think it's 16 what no it isn't it's 17 and a half because um if not you need the classes okay, then, yeah for yeah because you didn't need classes mm -mm. but you were 18 when you got it Yep. So I think it's 17 and a half. Uh -huh. If not, it's 18. Anyway, so you need the classes because then they teach you how to drive and then you're supposed to be learning how to drive with like an instructor because they have the brake and the pedal in their car. <laughs> supposedly. So that's the first time I had ever really drove was with this instructor. And my mom refused to take me out to drive until I had gotten a few classes, which now looking at it is like, I mean. It's not like GTA. It, like, you, you know what I mean? So my instructor really did help me. And so I took, I, th I think it's like, I think it's six hours behind the wheel because, yeah, it was three different lessons, two hours each time or something like that. Yeah, I think uh, something like that. I bet it's expensive. How, what was the pricing? Do you remember? There, I mean, it's pricey. I think it was like my classes were maybe like 200 something, uh, which is, yeah. That's pricey. I remember that. Yeah, it was really, really pricey. Like my mom, um, my parents paid for that, thankfully. But anyway, yeah, so I learned how to drive whatever, but I didn't actually like start driving till maybe like two weeks before my permit. And then my mom would go out with me and I was like, mom, I need to practice. Like I'm going to take my test and I don't know how to drive. Like, I don't even know how I passed my test, <laughs> but that'll be a story for another time because I should not have passed my test. So I don't even think I've ever told you what happened. No, my I test. don't even know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, We'll talk about it a different one. Cause this is, this is a different story time that I'll talk about. Anyway. So I took my test, whatever, got my license. And then after I got my license, then my mom would let me drive. Right. But I didn't have a car. So, mm. 
I think I have the timeline wrong somewhere. I think I might have gotten my license like way earlier, like in tw- in nineteen. Yeah, I got my license in twenty nineteen. Okay, yeah, because you were like sense. seventeen or sixteen when you had your license. So I took my yeah, I took yeah, yeah. So I w- it was twenty nineteen when I got my license. I got it really early because I was like really on my shit about that. And so I didn't drive. I had my license and I didn't drive because I didn't have a car. And my dad wouldn't let me drive like the cars. Like he wouldn't because I didn't have insurance. So they wouldn't let me drive because I didn't have insurance. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't get insurance because I didn't have money to pay for the insurance. So I just had my pretty ass little license, but I couldn't drive. <laughs> so my life, entire life goal was to be able to get money so that I could get a car and get insurance. Right. Which we're talking big bucks. at Thousands. that point. Yeah. That's like big bucks. So. And at this point, uh, my YouTube channel was like doing good, but I wasn't getting paid from AdSense. So it didn't even matter if it was doing good because I wasn't making any money. So it was like this just whole big loophole. Anyway, my mom eventually like let me go a few times because I'd be like, mom, look, like this video is going to do good. Like, please let me, please let me. And it was back when drive with me's were really blowing up. Oh, shoot. I don't know if you remember. Because I remember, me, I remember you would go like to Carl's Jr. and stuff and like just that. just drive. Yeah. Because people loved the drive with me's. And it was not only because um, my audience at the time, I think was also like either learning how to drive, starting to think to drive. So like they wanted to see me drive. So it was like I, a younger audience that watched those videos. Which are now watching the podcast. And it's crazy because they grew up with me. But yeah, it was at that time, like they were loving the drive with me. It's like, now if I did a drive with me, people, they'd be like, what the, like. It would be more good. targeted to the younger audience. Yeah. Like they, yeah. You know? So I was like, mom, please, please, please. And she let me do like a few. I think there's a few on my channel of uh, driving these, but I didn't know how to drive. Long story short, got my car in May. I made it. I got my <laughs> car in May. And then I was able to drive from May to October. But I wasn't ready to do a two-hour road trip is what I'm trying to say. So that I couldn't go with Jake. That's a alone. whole different story on my end. Yeah. That's a whole different story that he's going to talk about right now. But I couldn't drive. So I, I would have, like, my mom go with me. Like, either the pause would go with me. Like, basically, I would have people go with me because it was just a long-ass drive. But then... I decided to put my big girl cap on because at <laughs> one point in my life, like I just did it. The worst thing that is just like the absolute thing that I hate the most in this world is depending on anybody for anything, like anything. I just hate it so much. So when I wanted to go see Jake, like I literally couldn't because one, my parents got used to the fact that I was like asking them to go with me and they were obviously more comfortable that way. And two, like me as a person, like I was like, oh shoot, like who am I going to take? You know? And I hate that. I hate that because I could do it. You know, I'm fully functional. I'm healthy and I'm okay. And I needed to figure it out. So I was like, I'm going to go by myself to Bakersfield. Right. And so that was the entire life plan. And I had planned it out in my head, how I was going to do it, where I was going to pit stop. Like this whole idea, right? I have a literal to do an itinerary of how I'm going to get to Bakersfield because keep in mind, my parents at this point did not let me actually stay over there. I had to like be driving back. It was like a whole thing. Like driving back the same night. Yeah. 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 It was like this whole. So I planned it all out and I ended up deciding to, I think like a few days before I was like, I'm going to take Nelly with me. I know this story. I was like, I'm going to take Nelly with me because if I, t- if I take Nelly, like my parents are most likely to not tell me anything because growing up my parents were always just very not even growing up but my parents always told us like that you couldn't hang out with your boyfriend alone like there needed to be somebody else right so i was like okay i'm gonna take nelly but like in my head it was like if nelly goes with me they're gonna be better with the idea of it because at that point like now things are different like now if i try to take nelly somewhere with me like their viewpoint on things is different now it's more like Nat has her own life, but like Nelly still needs to be under our rules. Back then it was like we were both under their rules. So it didn't really matter. Like if we went together, it wasn't that big of a deal to whereas now things have really changed. So I was like, I'm going to, I'm just, I'm going to take her. So I told my mom and my mom told my dad that same night. Cause I had told her like a, a day before. And then my mom would just like talk to him at night. And then the next morning, my mom was like, my dad had told my mom to tell me not to go. Right. Like the day that you're leaving? Yeah, the day I was leaving. I was like, no, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm going to leave. I was like, I told my mom, this is going to be good. Like, I need you to trust me. Like, I know it's going to perform well. And at that time, like, honestly, A, I was really trying to see you. But B, I was really trying to grow my career. And I knew that that was going to be good. So are you saying. Long story short, uh, it grew hella. But are you saying that you were using me? No, I was not using so how the you. So tab- the, how the tables have turned. At first you were saying, like, I was using you. Now it's you were actually using me. 
Bam, the bunk. taking advantage of the situation. The bunk. <laughs> I was like, really? You know, I was like, this is going to do good. Like, I need you guys to trust me, you know? And I, and I understand my parents. Like, I was what at this time? Like, 17? Yeah. I was 17. I mean, not that young. I was 17. That's really young to be traveling two and a half hours to a different city. Yeah, I don't even blame them. But, and it was just like a whole, a whole thing. But yeah, I ended up packing my shit when my dad went to work because my dad had gone to work thankfully because i didn't know if he was gonna go to work but if he didn't i wouldn't have gone for sure because he would have literally told me to get my ass back inside but he did he went to work and my mom went to work and i told my mom like i'm leaving like bye and i said bye to my mom and while they're at work no before because my mom oh, okay. leaves after my dad like uh-huh. my dad leaves first and then my mom leaves after and yeah i packed my stuff nelly packed her stuff <laughs> dude and we loaded up my little malibu and we sailed out right and we headed out and it was fine like i remember being like my heart was beating the whole time because like it's not only me now it's more of like now i have the responsibility of her and nelly was young at this point well how old was i think nelly, nelly was 12 tw- 12 nelly was 12 nelly was a child okay she was a baby so nelly couldn't really like if i was in a situation till this day nelly couldn't fucking help me if i was in a situation but like then it was le- like less right like it was just me and we weren't even 18 I don't even think I was allowed to have Nelly in the damn car because my license wasn't even like the two years or the year or whatever. I don't remember. But yeah, we sailed off and we were fine. Like I remember we called Jake. We were like having the time of our lives. Yeah, you were so excited. You know, like I was so happy and I was so proud of myself. I was like, I'm going to do this. Like go Nat, you who, right? <laughs> This story takes a drastic turn. I remember being like, I have to teach my dad that I could do it, you know, because my dad has always been a person that like, you have to show him that you can do something and then he'll believe that you could do it. But like before that, he'll be like, no, 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 no. Right. Like he's always been super paranoid and super cautious, like to an extreme almost like my dad's an extremist when it comes to like safety. So I'm like, I'm going to show my dad I could do it by myself. You know, I'm like, I need to break the ice so that moving forward, he can let me do this. So. We, uh, if you've ever traveled to Bakersfield from like the LA area, you know, you have to cross a big ass mountain to get to Bakersfield. And it's like, this mountain is basically like, there's like a few towns here and there, but like, basically they're towns with like a population of two people. So you really need to get across the mountain to hit like civilization again. Okay? <laughs> it's a big fucking deal. Like this same freeway will like shut down whenever there's like snow and there's like no way to reach Bakersfield. Yeah. There's, you like, have to go. There's only two ways to get there and it's like no it's population through, either like, way. Yeah. It's just really, really bad. Like the detour is like fucking five hours. It's really, really bad. Like this is why I always would make fun of Bakersfield and tell Jake like, Oh, you live a whole mountain away because it's this huge mountain. They go by, right? So in this mountain, there's like no gas stations. There's after you like go like a certain amount of miles. I don't know how many the miles is, but like there's like one or two gas stations. It's one every like 25 miles. Yeah. So, and then it's not like a population. It's It's like a gas gas station. station. Right. So you have to go over this whole mountain, which takes like an average of like an hour, I would say. Yeah. Because it takes. Yeah, it's like an hour of mountain time that you have to go through. And then once you get off the mountain, it's funny. It's actually pretty cinematic. When you're going down the mountain, you can see actual, like, nothing. But that's Bakersfield. So you're going down the mountain, right? And it's like, cow- what do they have there? They have they cows. Have, they sell fruit. They have cows, fruit, and then a little bit after, they're like there's, like, the outlets. but And there's fields. Yeah, there's fields. It's really, really actually a, a nice scenery. But just don't inhale. It stinks. Yeah, it's like a cow. And then they have, like, a CHP but you could see, like, that you're coming down. You're like, okay, like, I'm out of the mountain. It's, like, flats after that. And you're still, from that point, you're still, like, about 30-ish minutes from the city, Bakersfield. So you have, like, a bunch of, like, flats to go through. But at this point, like, let's say you get stuck here, you'll be fine. Because there's, like, CHP. And there's just, You like, can call AAA and they'll be there soon. There's signal. How about that? There's signal now. So you'll be fine if you get stuck in this area, right? There's, like, outlets and, like, actual, like, people live in, the, in these places. But after you pass the outlets, okay, there's, how do I explain this in the best way possible? Like, if you're from Bakersfield, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But, like, for people that aren't, like, how do I explain this in the best way? So when you get off of that mountain and you're coming down, it's very cinematic. I'll take a video next time we go down so you guys can see what I'm talking about. When you're going down, right, you're going to see the outlets, which is like a mall. It's like a, like a mall and like an in and out And, like, there's like a pretty, like, civilized place there. But then once you pass that, you start to hit those flats again where there's kind of like really like yeah, nothing Yeah, it's like much 20 more minutes of flats. Of just kind of like nothing, right? 
And then you start hitting like your streets, which Bakersfield has like a total of eight exits, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so you have, is it eight? It's probably like, uh, it's like eight, eight. Nah, eight to, eight to, tw- uh, eight to 12. Of real, real Bakersfield? Yeah. You think so? I think so. Like eight to 12 exits, right? Like there's like mini ones that go to a different freeways and stuff like but that. But that's, that's different. Why. No, like actual exits. That but can yeah, like there's like real. eight, eight, nine streets. Yeah. And that's, the that's the city, right? So, but before you get to that, there's like, you know, the, the flats. So in these flats, right, we make it off the mountain and me and Nelly are like, yeah, right? Like, we made <laughs> it. You know, we're about to get here. And then all of a sudden, I get a, a, a thing in my car that says, like, low tire air, right? Did you, did, and did, No, no, low tire pressure. A low tire pressure. And did you feel like the bumps while, you, while you're driving? So at first, I like, I started noticing the car was driving a little weird, but. It could have been the road. It could have been the road, the bump. Like, I just didn't think much of it. And then I get the low tire air and I'm like. Look at it. And it, it like for a moment, it settled in my head. And I'm like a paranoid person when it comes to Because I already knew I wasn't supposed to be doing what I was doing, right? I wasn't even supposed to have left. And then I see that. I'm like. And it drops, dude. Like when I tell you, it went from like a 27 to like, I think it was like 24. And then it just started going down. down and that's when I knew like, fuck, right? Like the biggest F bomb that I dropped because I just knew. Like, did you get that heart sinking uh, feeling? Yes, the, dude. Like, my boom. first thing was my dad's gonna kill me. So I put my freaking <laughs> turn signal, and thankfully, I don't know what the street name is anymore. But every time I pass by it to Bakersfield, I feel a warmth it's, in it's my It's like heart. the Button Willow one, or no, 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 no. It's the the pump. I don't. It's know. the first street that opens up. The first first street. I know what it you're takes you about. to pretty much nothing too, but it like it's the first street. I don't know what the hell the name is, but there was a street. We had just finished going through that flat line. Like if we would have been a quarter of a mile back, I wouldn't have made it. Like I would have been stuck in these flats and I would have to call C. Like I would have to call somebody and I didn't have AAA. I wasn't even 18. My name wasn't on the title of this car. Like we would have been in a <laughs> real pickle. All right. I got a fucking minor in the car. with me. I'm a minor. Like it would have been so bad. But thankfully, I put my turn signal. I'm leaving. And at this point, the car's starting to feel real bad. I could see us like, I knew, like, something was really, really bad. So at this point, I call my mom because what else am I going to do, right? Mom, I have a little tire air. It says that I'm at, at this point, I think I was at 18. It says that I have 18. And mom was like, 18? Like, that's so bad. <laughs> She's like, get off, get off of the freeway. Like, go find a gas station and call, like, um, Jake and put air in it or something like that, right? But she knew that there was something in the in the. She thought that there was like a nail in the tire because eighteen is really low. Like these tires, I think were like thirty four tires. Eighteen, dude, that's like like the done. air the air depleted to to eighteen. Yeah, wow. it fast. Like I'm telling you, like it happened within like two minutes. No, Jake. Less? Like 30 seconds. What? It was so bad. <laughs> You're like boom, 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 jiving. Yeah, dude, out of nothing, it just happened. And so I get I get off on this exit, and I don't know where to go, right? And I'm, I'm telling Nelly, like, Nelly, search up a gas station, right? Like, we don't know where to go. We I get off, and I'm looking, but this is, fl- again, it's flat, and it's very undeveloped. So there's, like, I can't see anything. It's just dirt. And I'm like, Nelly, look up a gas station. And I was like, I'm going to take a left. So I get off, and I take a left. And there's a freaking gas station, like, kind of like on my right side. And so I, I get in that gas station. I call you and I'm like, Jake, my tire is, what did I tell you? Like Jake, my, if you it don't says, stop yawning, Jake, I'm going to see us. Sorry. You were like, Jake, my, uh, my tire says low pressure. I think I have a nail on my tire. Or you something said something like that. And then I was like, I thought you were trolling me because you were excited the entire time. And I was like, how in the world can this happen? As soon as you're about to come, you're like 15 minutes away. And I, I had zero confidence in Jake at this point. So I didn't think like, I'm like, what is going to ha- like, what is he going to do? And I didn't know Jake's parents at this point. Yeah. They weren't really, they, they pro- have you guys even met? I don't know if you, I, maybe I once. Had. It was like, this was my second time ish meeting his parents. Yeah. So, and I'm, I was familiar with changing car tires and everything. So she calls me and I'm like, don't worry. I can go and I can change a tire for you. But I drive 15 minutes later and I get there to the gas station and I'm like, hold on, which one's flat? And your tire was like, Flat. It needed it to be was changed like ASAP. Bad. So yeah, we didn't have new cars at this time, my family. So we're like, hold up, what's going on? I didn't find your spare tire. Usually the spare tire is under the car, but in the new ones <laughs> they put it in the new ones they put it in the back, like underneath in the trunk. 
and they don't give you like the the little jacks that you pump up. They give you a jack that like it's like a four in one. It's a it's a crossbar and it's a jack. So you have to build yeah. both of those. And I'm like, I don't know how to do this. And I didn't read the manual. I'm, I'm like, I didn't know how to do this. And then thankfully, now we, you could have totally figured it out. Oh yeah, I've the done person it. you are now, yeah. Yeah, now I've done it already. My tire had my car had a flat on your dad's birthday that one time, yeah. and I had to fix it in like 20 minutes. But um, yeah, so we're, I was like, hold up, I don't know how to do this now. And she was worried too, and we're like. And I called my dad and he's trying to explain it. But uh, some guy came up to us, an older man. He's like, you guys need help? And I'm, and I'm like knew. so embarrassed. though. So, yeah, because he, like, he sees a little kid and a little girl. They're like, what, what is he doing? And I was super embarrassed because I told him like, I'm confident uh, in what I told her. I was like, I could fix this tire. I could change it he for you. He literally said like, oh, yeah, let me go change your tire real quick. <laughs> I wasn't even stressing on my way over there. I, th- I didn't know. <laughs> I don't know why I thought I could have done it, uh, but I didn't do it. And the guy's like. I'll do it for you for a case of beer. And I'm like, <laughs> literally said that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Bud Light or Michael of Ultra. Good, like, this is like right, right person, right time. Because if there was this gas station again, remote, like, yeah, it was pretty empty at that point. And he was like, uh, yeah, I could change it for you in, uh, for a case of beer. And I was like, all right, I'll give you the money. I think I give him like 40 bucks. And I, bro, yeah, a case of beer bucks. is probably like, 25 <laughs> and we gave him 40 this guy bro. dude i don't care i could have given him a thousand dollars because he saved our life jake yeah we were from where we are there like dude we were still like 15 minutes away from your house mm-hmm. i wasn't gonna make it on that tire Mm-mm. you weren't no way there's no way and okay so this guy takes the tire off and we find out what the hell was wrong look at that dog what the <laughs> hell was wrong with it there was a hole about the size of a quarter on my tire like a hole like eh, there was not, that's why the air left so fast it just popped open and then everything just went and what could it have been though we don't so we never found out what it was um it, it must have been because i never felt anything like i never felt like i went over anything it wasn't the size of a quarter it was smaller but no baby it was huge no i don't yeah, remember it being big it was huge i remember he was like dude they're not gonna patch this like you're not going to fix this. That's what the guy told me. It was so bad. And then I think, um, so who ended up telling us that it could have been a, a huge nail that was in there and it like pulled it back and it created that huge hole. I don't, I don't know. Somebody told someone, us that. I don't know. Yeah. So from there, he changed the tire for us. Yeah. The old man changed the tire for us and gave him his money. And then Nat's crying. Like Nat's bawling her eyes out at this point. Like, she's like, I don't know what to do. My dad's Dude, mad at me. I was <laughs> You're- freaking Ow. You were stressed. Like the first time you take your sister out anywhere, you drive two hours away and then bam, your tire gets uh-huh. flat. It's crazy. Cause like now if that would happen, I would just literally call AAA and say, fix my tire. Like it's not, mm. but it's crazy. Cause you're so young and you don't know about anything. It's just a part of life at this point though. Yeah, it is. And that's why we're I'm really like young. So, I'm so grateful that like I went through all of that and I'm, I don't regret going at all. Like, honestly, it taught me so much like this. Everything that we've been through has taught us, so many things to like put us where we are now that if this shit would have happened to us now, like it's like work, it's what, you know, so much worse stuff has happened to us, but it's crazy that at that point in time, like we were fresh out the womb. So yeah, the old man puts us home. (laughs) Yeah. So the old man puts a spare tire on and we get on our way and, um, we need to fix the tire because Nat's running on like three normal tires and then one super small tire that's probably not that even the same. That thing was tiny. That would have scammed. It's not, it's not the same size as your tire, dude. And Yeah, I was like this, dude. It was so bad. And we're headed to my house and we get to my house and we're like, all right, what do we do now? So we call my dad and my dad's like, all right, let's go to this tire shop. Uh, my neighbor has a tire shop and he hooks it up all the time. So we no, went to his. By the way, you know how I felt when his dad came out and was like, oh, yeah, let's go fix your tire. Do you guys know what I felt in that moment? Is it like that feeling where it's like your dad's here too? Yes. It was like my dad came to save my life. <laughs> and it was like Jake's dad was like a Jake's dad's a dad. Like, I don't know how to like, like a dad like mine. Like, he's very like knows how to do everything. Like, you need something. He's there, you know. So. But I didn't know that at the time, bef- like prior to this incident. So I was like, oh, like. I, I didn't know. And so when his dad comes out, he's like, oh, yeah, like, I got a friend. He's got a tire shop. Like, let's go. Let's go fix it. And it then was my, just like. <sighs> and then my dad's like, uh, who has the keys? And then Nat's like, okay, I have the keys. And he's like, okay, let me see. And then my Nat was, like, very hesitant. And she's like, what? And then he's like, so I could drive us there. And then Nat's like. And then I, was, I, I didn't even know what to say at this <laughs> point because I'm like, 
Uh, Nat's not going to let anyone drive her brand new car that she just got. She's like, my dad's like the last person on the list to drive that car. I didn't know what to tell my dad. Like, I was going to tell him, like, she's not going to let you drive her car. But I didn't want him to be messed up. So I was like, yeah, dad, just tell her where to go. And she's telling um, him the directions. And my dad's sweating because he's always working on something. So he was working on the cars at this point. <laughs> and my dad's in the car sweating his ass off. Like, he, he had sweat coming down as if he just switched the tire on. Right? And he's just, like, looking around, looking at me, just like, are you going to say something? Because he sees me. He sees that I see him sweating. And he's like... Your AC doesn't work or what? <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't even know Nat like that, but my dad's like a like a comedian, bro. Oh He's like, my your God. AC doesn't work or what? And Nat's like, that. like we started dying. And she, and she turns it up one. Remember that? He's just like... <laughs> and he, Jake blasted it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, so I... My parents always, always, always told us that you never drive anybody's car. And it's facts. No. Jake knows that now. Like, you never drive anybody's car. You don't let anybody drive your car. Mm -hmm. Like, cars, you you never let anybody borrow, right? And so, that's that's all I've known. Like, growing up, like, my parents would not let anybody use their car. No one. no, And they wouldn't use anybody else's car. Like, they'd rather walk than use somebody else's car. So, in like, you know, I'm this already happened to me. I already fucked up the tire. Like, <laughs> what if I let Jake's dad, you know, drive the car and then an accident happens? Then my dad's really going to fucking hang me. Like, I'm done, right? So, I didn't know what to, like, I wasn't going to let him drive, but I didn't want to be messed up, you know? And at that point, it's like, if something happens, I didn't have the money to replace the car, you know? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, something happens with the insurance. Like, everyone's insurance is going to go up and we're all fucked, you know what I mean? So... I don't know. I think my parents always kind of really instilled a lot of fear in me in that sense, which I am so grateful for now because then when you become an adult and you see things through like the same eye, it's like, now wait you, a now minute. Now you know what they were talking about. Yeah, like this is really serious. So yeah, now, like I don't let anybody drive my car and it'll always be that way. But in that moment, it was like, I didn't know what to say. So yeah, my, my dad's giving her the instructions. It's probably like a five minute drive. And we get to the tire shop and my dad tells the guy what's going on. And they just pull the car up. They lift the thing up. We're inside the side. of the car, by yeah, the way. Yeah, we're inside the car. They lift everything up, lift the car, check it out, take the tire off, and plug the tire in like 10, 15 minutes, like quick. And then they put it back on, and we're literally on our way. But that's the You main... missed a huge, crucial part. What did I miss? So when we're driving on our uneven-ass tire, me, Jake, and Nelly, right, before we get to his uh, parents' house, no, I'm, we're I... driving around dealerships because... I thought that you have to go to a dealership and buy a new tire when you get a hole in your tire. Did you forget that? I and did then I went, And that. then I pulled up to Chevy and they're like, our service department is closed. <laughs> and I was like, well, I have a hole in my tire. And he's like, so go to a tire shop. <laughs> I don't remember that. You don't remember no. that? It might be in the vlog. Maybe. Um, and yeah, they basically told me like, just go to a tire shop. But I was like, no, get me a new tire. Like, I just I was like, what if I don't make it back with the fucking plug? Like, I just didn't know. Like I have a two hour drive, man. This is serious. And I have a fucking child in the car. I was just scared. Oh, but that's after they get the past the tire. No, babe. This is us driving in the little ass spare tire oh, okay. because I didn't know what to do. And then you were like, let's just, just, let's go talk to my dad. But at this point, I didn't have any faith in your dad. Cause I didn't know your dad, uh -huh. but then we get there and then your dad's like, you know, Your like dad. a dad. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, perfect. So then, yeah, he fixed it for us. And <laughs> and then it was all fine. Happy, merry, merry, happily, merry. What is happily it? ever happily after. Ever after. And then I drove back home and I did get scolded by my parents. But no, I thought we missed a crucial part. I thought this is what the same day that your parents came into town too. Or is that a whole different day? No, I don't think so. Do you remember when we had the hotel and then your parents came that same day that surprised us? Do you remember? Oh my gosh, no. Are you talking about some more hood rat shit we did? What is that? You don't remember now? Okay, so there was a time, I don't know if, I thought it was the same day actually, but a time where we, you left to Bakersfield by yourself again and we were having like a, a cool date, whatever, and then we were inside the hotel room and then you check your parents' location all of a sudden because they call you, they're like talking like, they're joking around with you like, we're going to go see you guys or we're going to go visit you guys and you're like, all right, nah, nah, nah. And then you hop in the shower and we're in the hotel room right now. And then all of a sudden you check your, your dad's location and they're literally like 10 minutes away from us. Remember that? You just made my fucking heart like they, drop. Her parents literally snuck up on us while we're doing our freaking we were, little kid shit. We, <laughs> Do you remember? Nat, like, I was like, bro, hold up. Let me, let me get you ready. You got dressed so fast. <laughs> because... <laughs> 
<laughs> so a little backstory. Nat, I thought you took your sister too, but me and Nat were, were probably like Jake, not even dating. Jake, it was that same weekend, Jake. It, it was? was. Yeah, see, dude. And we stayed at the hotel by the outlet. So we, you know when we were talking about like the <laughs> flatlands that you have to get to to get to the to the city? Well, before that, there's like hotels next to the outlet. And that's where we were staying at the time. So coming down from like LA, like it's not the very far drive. It's 30 minutes less for them to stop by the hotels. And they like they were joking around when they called Nat, and all of a sudden it you check like his location. It was like midnight, Jake. It was like t- 10 p.m., dude. We like no- wake up. It was midnight. We literally. were doing any like Nelly was in the room with us. Yep. And it is that same day. It, it is. is I knew it. It is because I remember my dad came and then um that's why they even let that's why my mom was like, okay, fine, you guys can go because they were gonna meet us there the day after. They knew. They knew. Damn. It was that same time. Yeah, so yeah, so we were uh you checked his location, he was ten minutes away, and they booked the same hotel as us. They the same did. one. And they didn't know that Jake was there because obviously, like <gasps> Oh, <laughs> So we had Jake sneak out through the door, and I was like, "Be careful, make sure you like." Because he, when he left, our car was coming in. I forgot about that. I thought me and your dad were cool at that time. No, so. that he didn't know that you were there. Remember? Yeah, because I didn't want to. I didn't want her to stay at the hotel alone. Uh, I, I Nelly was, like, was there. I was protecting but her. We were scared, like me and Nelly were, and and I think how did how was did it? we even get the hotel? We got it because my either my cousin or my sister booked it for us. Oh my gosh, dude! dude there so were so many hotels, shit. so many hotels with family members booking them for us. So much, oh my, and money and time for other people. Oh my gosh, I just remembered that. Yeah, you're right. Wait, was it at night or was it the next morning? No, baby, it was at night. I remember because th- none of this made it to the vlog. Did it? No, none of it made it to the vlog. Honestly, I think <laughs> the only thing that made it to the vlog was maybe like when um. Me and Nelly are in there, and then it looks like it's just me and Nelly because you were hiding in the back because my parents would watch my videos. But Jake was actually there the whole time, and like I remember, we went to bed, um, and I woke up and I saw the location. They were there, and he snuck out. So there was two doors, and I remember we our room was like next to a door. So when my parents got there, I was like, go through the back door, but make sure you don't run into them in the car because they my parents were pulling up. But he had to leave. I think did you wait for them to come inside for you to so leave? I had to go to the I had to go through the back door, like the exit door down the stairs, because I didn't know if they were gonna come up through the elevators and like we we see each other because if he sees me, he knows it's me. <laughs> So <clears throat> I'm running down the elevators on like like the emergency exit going down. I think we're probably on the third, second, third floor, whatever. And <clears throat> I'm in my car and I don't even turn it on. I just go in my Mazda and I close the door and I, I leave it off because they don't even know my car at this point. I don't, I don't think believe. they knew your car. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm we're on the phone right now um, or we're texting and I'm asking like, is he there yet? Is he there yet? Question mark. And making sure he's upstairs before I leave, because if I leave and I run into him, I don't really have tints like that. So he could look in the car and he could see me. Yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, he ended up going in your guys' room. I, I think we were on the phone and I heard his voice and then like that's when I hung up and I dipped. But your dad snuck up on us. I feel like he I felt like he knew I was trying to do yeah, we we're trying to you. do something. Yeah. And he snuck up. Your parents snuck up on us while we were I doing remember. our hood. And I think Edith and Paws came too, I'm pretty sure. I think they might have told us though. No. No? No, Edith and Paws came too. Dang. I remember. Yeah, that was freaking crazy. Because remember then, oh, do you remember? It was that same time that I had to, I think was it when I drove back and then you missed the exit so I couldn't say bye to you and I was pissed at you for like a whole day? Oh, bro, don't even tell me about that. I get so upset at that too. You know, I think back at that and I'm like, I literally thought about breaking up that same day. Uh, Yeah, so I didn't really know how to drive and I didn't even know streets. No, he knew how to drive, but he didn't know like... He to wasn't be fair, aware listen, of anything. Yeah, That's I wasn't aware. Was. I wasn't aware of anything. I wasn't aware of much at all. But to be fair, there was two of the same stores that you told me. There's two gas stations. And you're like, this gas station. Because I, you were just there, babe. I was literally like. He was literally there. 30 second drive from there. But I took the wrong turn. I actually went straight instead of turning. And there's like but no like, U-turn. It, it was like a combination of events because like Jake had been. Remember when I told you guys like, oh, he went in the wrong freeway. Like it was a combination of things where he was missing every street. Every exit, like we would just be somewhere and be like, oh, let's go back to there. Oh, I don't know how to get back. Right. Like that kind of and like it was within like weeks of this, like really, really weeks. Like I remember like Jake wouldn't know how to get to it, like our house from the freeway. Like even though like it was just little things like that, that to me were like, are you fucking kidding me? Like he just wasn't aware of things or like something would happen right next to him. And he wouldn't even know because he was just like in La La Land all the time. Mm -hmm. And 
I remember I tell him like, you need to be more aware. Like you need to be more aware. And this time, right. He had a window where I wanted, I couldn't say bye to him because, um, we were again at the outlets, which is like 30 minutes from where the, the city of Bakersfield is. And you were leaving with your dad. Your dad wanted to leave in the morning, but you guys did something and you had a little window, like a five, 10 minute window. Yeah. To say bye. So we're waiting. We're at this gas station waiting for Jacob to get here. Right. We're waiting for him for the longest time ever. Okay. And he's about to come. But everyone's like, we got to go. We got to go. Like, they're honking at me. Like, they're waiting. But I'm waiting because I wanted to say bye to him. We're long distance at the time. So I didn't know when the next time, I, you know, t- I was going to see him. So I'm like, Jake, we're at the gas. This is the same hotel we got caught out the night before. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm here. And he literally takes the wrong turn. And the issue with this is that when you take a wrong turn, it's it leads not. You, and it leads you to the freeway. Like you can't you even turn around. to the freeway. So once you remember, this is like flats. If you get on that freeway, you're, goodbye. You're gone to the next civilization street. It, yeah, you're gone. Like it's not like, oh, get off on the next ex- exit. No, it's like you're, you're gone. Like you're. <laughs> so yeah, he took the wrong turn and he was gone. Yeah, I remember that. And That's, I remember just like. You looking were so, at his location. You were so disappointed. And I was like, you had one shot and you fucked it. Because again, like after the same thing is happening over and over and over and over and over again, like you get really tired of it really fast. Yeah, Because in the beginning of our relationship, we don't really put that much out there, but this is the podcast. So I feel like we give you guys the raw, the raw information behind the scenes. I was super, super behind. Like I was slow. I wasn't really attentive to many things as I am now. And in the beginning, um, uh, one of the main problems that we were having was like my uh, attentiveness, my Mm -hmm. awareness, all of this stuff. And I was just letting her down every single day, especially when I moved over here. I was just constantly letting her down. And it became to a point where like driving and like knowing the streets around me was the biggest was the biggest thing, because if I didn't have my GPS, I didn't know where I I was at. Dude, did we ever tell him the lunch story? What lunch story? Oh, my. Where you took me to school in the morning. I feel like if we tell them that story, it's going to give up too much too much of the information of, like, locations and stuff, but. Oh, okay. Basically, long story short, Jacob couldn't, he was supposed to take me lunch, but his phone died. And I didn't know how to get to her And he was literally, her like, in front of the school. Mm-hmm. And he had been to the school so many times, like, so many times. Yeah, so what my problem was, when I was looking at the maps while I was driving, it's like, maybe you guys have this too, but you look at the maps and you're like, right turn, okay, you, you do a right turn. You don't remember, you don't even think about, like, I, well, okay, I did a right turn maps, on this certain babe. street. No, I know it's not the maps, but it's also my brain too. And like me in general, but it's like you turn the right um right on the street, it tells you to turn right on, you're not gonna remember it unless you're vividly like trying to memorize where you're going. And I wasn't at the time. But uh we came to a point where like Nat's like, no more phone, no more maps, and figure out where you're gonna go without it. And I remember one time we had to get it was probably like a five minute drive, it turned into like an hour an drive. Hour. And he was just taking the right and Again, this wasn't somewhere new. Like, this is somewhere where we had gone, like, every single day for the past week. And it, it doesn't come down to directions. It comes down to awareness. And, like, I felt like he wasn't, like, things could be happening around us. I'd be like, Jake, did you just see? It? Like, huh? Like, what? Like, it was just very, he wasn't there. when. Mm-hmm. But it was really important because, like, when you be, become, like, when you start living on your own and stuff, like, if you're not aware, you're going to get robbed. Like, you just don't know what can happen and you need to be. And he's, like, super aware now like things are very different this was like year one you know but it was really hard because he wouldn't pay attention to things like he would just kind of like man eh, like you know what and i would be like no like we're adults like we need if we mess up like this is really bad and thankfully things change and you're like yeah, thankfully but you're like, like way better than me i like so much now mm-hmm. but it, it took was, a while it, was tough. it took it was, a super long while it was so fucking hard it was really 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 hard anyway yeah that time i couldn't say bye to him and i remember like just seeing him leaving on the freeway and i didn't even say anything i was so like, disappointed I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna leave like i'm not even gonna say anything i was so disappointed in myself it's like you know that feeling where you get where you let yourself down like you don't care about who else you let down like you let yourself down because you were really looking forward i drove 30 25 minutes to just go see nat i take one wrong turn and i'm going 25 minutes back to without even saying bye to nat and i was like damn mm-hmm. i just messed I up i remember i got in the car so after that, my uh, my dad was like, is he almost here? And I remember just, like, looking up, and, like, I just started crying. And I got in the car, and I just left. Yeah, your dad's like, bruh. My dad has always rooted for you. Thankfully. Yeah, my dad has always rooted for you. Because remember? he, he knows. I feel like your dad, ever since the beginning, he knew my true intentions. Yeah, he knew you're a good guy. Mm-hmm. And he would just be like, um, it's like be you know when you see like, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when, 
when you're you're like I feel, I can't say it yet, but I could I could say it now to my uh, past self like you're older but you see a younger boy doing stuff like doing younger boy stuff you're just like it just takes time for them to grow and mature and that's what your dad was like like he he's just learning right now yeah he would just be like be patient with him like he'll pick up on it and he'd be like oh Jacob like he'll pick up and you know like that kind of stuff I remember that was a lot before because he knew that you were a good guy mm -hmm. like you just needed to I just needed a little guidance and awareness. And then I would have been how I am right now. You needed a little bit of time alone. That's what it was. Because it took you like a year of living on your own. Like of not having anyone there. Mm -hmm. Like to, to figure it out. Which I yeah. think that's what it takes. Because if, if I wouldn't have been raised like the way that I was, it's with like parents who didn't speak English and like, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I, I don't think I would have. I don't think that would have been an issue because I wouldn't have been aware either. You know I, what I mean? Yeah, I feel bad right now uh, if, like, someone's listening and you're in that situation. Like, the TV's playing on loud, on loud right now and someone's hearing us talk about, like, my past self, but they're living in that moment. Like, I bet the guy or whoever it is, uh, if it's a girl or a guy, but mostly probably the guy because girls are smarter. <laughs> um, the guy's like, F I don't even want to watch. Turn this shit off right I now. I, yeah, it's just the worst feeling, bro. I feel you. You got time. You're going to get there. Don't yeah. Don't give up on him, girl. Trust he'll get there. Yeah, as long as he's a good guy, like, that's all it takes. Like, I always say that was that, like, you've always been really nice. And that's why, like, I I was like, I need to trust the process. Like, I, I really need to trust the process. Because I knew, like, once he gets better at life, like, it's going to be perfect because you were already a nice person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, someone can be good at life but a shit-ass person, and that won't change. Mm -mm. Like, you know, I was on the better scope of things. Like, you're a nice person, and I, you just need to learn things about life. Um, and it honestly just comes down to the fact that we were raised really differently. So I was more like, ad, like not advanced. I was more, I knew more things and you were more independent earlier than I was. That's what it is. I was more independent earlier and that's the only issue. But again, like if I wasn't, it, I wouldn't even have noticed all these things. And you know, I think it would have been and, a lot easier for us. And you're the older sibling. So in the relationship, she's the older sibling in her family, and I'm the younger sibling. So obviously the older siblings are going to be more advanced than the younger sibling. Yes, that's a that's a huge thing because, like, your older siblings are, like, really aware. If you're, if you're the older sibling of your family and you're dating, like, the youngest sibling of his family, then you know what I'm talking about or vice yeah. versa. It's tough. It's a really tough thing. But, like, once you make it out of the mud, like, you know how people always say, like, the first year of marriage is always the hardest? Yeah. Like, I wonder what those battles are because like the first year of dating is, you know what though? I why do you think, why all right, let's talk about that real quick. Why do you think the first year of marriage is always difficult? Is it because, um, like the, the, the first year of marriage life is like how we, how we lived our That's first year I'm of dating. Thinking. It might be because you know how a lot of people don't move until they're like married. I don't think we're going to be, uh, our, I, I don't, I hopefully not. Um, our first year of marriage is going to be that hard. I don't think so either. Just because I feel like we, We've already had that bump in our road. We've been living together for like two and a half years, uh -huh. right? And we've tra we've traveled a lot of the world to get like I think we've done things that married people do. Now, thank you. You're Eat welcome. It. Eat it. <laughs> I think that we do what um, married people do like now, but I at the same time I wonder if it's more of like a mental thing, like. We're in it for the rest of our life. Like, is that going to affect the way you? But think I don't think that should be a, that should be a role. I mean, a like a, a what's it called a factor in that because I I want you for the rest of my life. I yeah. say that like we're we're I'm not going to be with another girl. I'm I'm with you for the rest of my life, and I don't think that takes a toll on how I act with you, how I do certain things. I agree. Yeah, me too. So, but I, don't I do know think what it is. I do think it is like the first year we were living together where it was very Hard. very difficult. We were trying to figure each other out, figure ourselves out, but. Because we knew each other as like a couple, but like you don't know someone till you live with them. Yeah, like we've only we only knew each other while we were getting ready. Like we got ready and we would go see each other. Not when you wake up, you're you have to get ready, shower, do your morning routines, and then you find out your morning routine is completely different from what they do. They do. It's it's a totally different thing, and it's, it's something so that different. To, yeah, it's something that takes time to learn with each other. It took a while. Like I take like we always talk about this. Like our first year together was really hard, and not together as in dating. Because our dating phase was really, really awesome. It mm. was hard when shit got real, right? It's different when you're visiting, like you're visiting his place. You're she's visiting your, uh, he's visiting your place and stuff like that. But when you guys are like in the same house twenty four seven, that's mm. when it gets very challenging. Yeah, that's when I feel like it got really hard, really fast, and we were all so young, right? Like, 
Yeah. I feel like I feel like a lot of it had to do like for us to keep pushing. A lot of it had to do with uh, the hate we were getting on the internet oh, at that, that time for hard. moving for moving super quickly because in all, in all reality we did move extremely yeah. quickly uh, for certain reasons and I didn't want to feel I didn't want to make the internet seem at that time like they're gonna win. That's like the worst thing. Letting letting haters feel like they're gonna win is the worst feeling because they get that satisfaction of your failure. Yeah, I think that had a huge toll. Like, all the internet stuff that was going on at that time. But it's, like, I get it. Like, they were saying that we were moving fast. Like, I But I even if it. we even if we are moving fast, it's none, like, at the end of the day, it's nobody's business. Yeah, it was nobody. And we and, knew. And, some, like, there were so many people that were invested in that. So many people. And I was, like, why are you guys invested it's crazy in our relationship like, that much? I see, like. like not, not like that, but, like, invested in our relationship to give. To fail. No, to give, like, bad uh, bad advice or bad input, you know? No, I think that they were I invested in the relationship failing. That's what they that's were. What yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I think it's crazy because, like, I see so much drama on TikTok now, and I'm, like. Fuck, like, I remember when that was, like, us, and it was so hard because at the end of the day, like, nobody knows. Like, we knew that that was the best thing for us because when you're doing long distance, like, it's really tough, right? Not even just that, but, like, our job was filming. It was us. And when we were together, we made the most money, right? So we knew that we knew we wanted to be with each other. Like, I knew in that moment that you were someone that I wanted to be with. And... We were not, we were spending so much money on hotels, guys, because remember, he he had to commute. It was like we were spending so much money. We were losing, like, it was just not good. And I, I was like, the best thing will be for us to either live together, right? Or we, we, we needed to, like, live together. And I remember you were ready to leave your house. And I was like, just get an apartment out here and I'll have my apartment. And then now we could film and be closer and it'll be better. And we knew that it was time. Yeah, we did. We knew. And honestly, if that wouldn't have happened, I don't know. I don't think we, we would, would be, be here. We wouldn't be in the same spot. This podcast room wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have had our first house together. Yeah. It, would, it all played in, in God's plan. Because we knew. We and that's knew. What we it believed is. in ourselves. Yeah. And like people on the internet just see something and they think like, oh, you know, like. They're and moving so fast. And I get it. Like, we were 17. You know what I mean? Like, people are not going to be accepted, ac accepting of it. Mm -mm. But that really ruins a relationship when you're going to the internet for validation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, when you, we didn't need the validation. But I think that was our first time ever getting real hate. For me, it was my first time getting hate. My first time, right? I've been on the internet for so many years. Like, it was the first time I had ever gotten hate. And it was because of somebody else. Mm -hmm. Like, somebody else in my life. And it was crazy because it's like, are you fucking kidding me? And I think that's for the majority of people that get hate. That's like the the main thing is when when you bring someone else into your life, then they they have something to hate on you towards because you act different. You're like you're yeah. blah 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 this and that. You know, it's crazy the it way that wild. works, huh? Like especially now, like people other people bring other people in their lives, and then all of a sudden there's like this drama, this hatred towards people. And it's like crazy. Yeah, like, whenever I see drama, I see things so differently now. Like, whenever I see any scandal going on or something, like, I take it, like, with a grain of salt because you just never know. And, like, when you're the person on the other side of that screen getting shitted on, like, it's the worst. It's the worst. You have, like, imagine when a rumor, a rumor starts at school about you, right? And it's, like, fucking four people talking about you. You want your life to end. I, yeah, you do. You don't want to go to school, all right? You're sad. You think the world hates you. Now, imagine... Multiplying that times hundreds of thousands of people. Your school has a lot of people. Your school has an infinite amount of people. It is so many people, right? Like talking about you. Not even just that, but it, it trickles down to your family and your friends and the people you work with and everybody knows. And it, it becomes this huge hate train. So that's why whenever I see people getting flame on the internet, I'm just like, I give them my blessing without giving it to them. Like I just, I really hope that they're doing fine because Everything on the internet's kind of like an up and down thing. Like it'll it'll come down. Like the hate will come down, and then it it'll also come per, back it also depends on what role you have on the internet. What do you mean? Like there's, I feel like there's roles on the internet. Like there's uh people that they they're they live off the hatred, and then there's people that like are just trying to like be calm, and they get brought into the hatred. Oh yeah, there's definitely people that live off of that for sure. Which honestly, like. Get my your, respect. Get because, your bag. <laughs> yeah, my respect because that's hard. It's like a hard thing to do, like just accepting the hate and going. Is it, 
And isn't it so crazy on the internet? The more hate you get, like, for the most part, you get the most money. It's fucking crazy. It's literally crazy. Like, when I was freaking getting all that hate for my BBL, um, most money I've ever made. I just want you to know if you hated on me for my BBL, you paid for my G wagon. <laughs> it's like it's like a you, you, they say fuck you on a hundred dollar bill and they could give it's it to you. It's literally what it is. No, oh my god, that's the best analogy ever. Yeah, that's so true. That's what it is. That's what it is. To it file, depends like what to, kind of hate though. Yeah, it's like to file a complaint, you have to write it on a fifty dollar bill, and then you're the ass. You're the worst person in the world. Just hand yeah. you out money. Isn't it wild? It is crazy. It's like you're sacrificing your mental health for money. And I feel like that's what most jobs, most jobs get the most, like the, the jobs that you get paid for the most also do the same thing. Yeah, they just fuck up Sa- your mental health. Sa- sacrifice your mental health. Yeah, it's true. Honestly, it's so true. And I think it's so crazy the way that that works. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just part of like you being on social media, you pretty much say like goodbye to your privacy for like ever. It is what it is. It is. I think you just have to find like a, a good middle point for it. But I think that our relationship now, where we are now there's truly like because we've gotten so much hate as a couple i think now we've heard it all i think at that point it was our first hate scandal so it was different and that person who posted that tiktok like literally they took it down because of all the hate and that was so sweet of them because because the okay so there was a tiktok post that happened and the people that were commenting in it made it to made it a hatred post because it was a love post it was a love post and then people in the comments were like this and that like what was it? Now was forcing you to move out. Uh, yeah, stuff? now is forcing you to move if out. People and only knew the truth behind like all that. It's so crazy. And if you see hatred, then obviously someone that has a sim- similar feelings that doesn't want to be the first one to uh, post about it replies to it and becomes a long thread, mm-hmm. and then it becomes a war in there. And the person that posted that TikTok uh, meant it literally with no harm, and I kindly asked like for them to remove it. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm so sorry. I didn't even mean to do it. Like, like for them to have uh, yeah, that was so to, like sweet. hate on it." And I understood every like second. Yeah, of that was he deleted it. Yeah, he or did. She. Yeah, that I think was, it was a he. I think it was a boy, right? Mm. Yeah, that was so sweet of them because like they really didn't mean to, but it was all. And then also people were waiting for this moment, right? Like we had our relationship had blew up, right? Like, can you imagine? It, it, it reached so many people. So now all the people who were upset were waiting for their moment to shine. So it came. And, and then, then for the first time, people that seen it, they seen that post for the first time and then they see all the hatred. Then they're biased. They get that biased opinion to dislike Nat. Yes. So that's why, like, whenever I see any kind of hate, like, on my page, I'll erase it so fast because what happens is that when one person sees someone hating, it's monkey see, monkey do. Oh, I think the same thing and this and that. And, th- and then it just becomes this horrible, just not a nice space. So. Mm-hmm. Fuck you and your hate. I'm going to block you and I'm going to erase your comment because you're not doing that. If you want to do it, you could do it somewhere else, but not on my page. Like, because then it just gives people like, you know, people are coming to my page to have a nice, fun environment. And not, they're not going to open those comments and see a bunch of hate. Like, that's not that's nasty. I'm not I'm not doing that. But yeah, that whole thing was crazy. And I can't believe we went through that. Like our relationship was so fragile and young. And we literally overcame that. <laughs> So happy for Slay. us because no because that was that was bad it was horrible that was bad health. it was bad because there's our first hatred you know and it was for no reason that was the worst that it was for no like reason the, the first times your friends are like hey what's going on like are you guys okay like they're sending you this like uh ignore the hate and everything like that the fact that? that your family and your friends are seeing the hatred as well it just takes it a sucks. different a different person to overcome it. Yeah, it sucks. I remember that. It was literally for no reason. Mm-hmm. People were mad that I scheduled apartment showings for you and was giving <laughs> you pros and cons for each apartment. <laughs> like, keep in mind, this is the same time where Jake was really not self-aware at all. Like, uh, yeah. Jake could not make an educated decision to save his life, right? So I literally ranked apartments by price. I did this. I stayed up. I freaking booked showings for him. All right. In within a radius that I liked because it was like around things. So he would feel like he wasn't like in the middle of nowhere. Like I wanted him to be around things that there was a lot of places to eat and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I like looked, I literally looked at ratings like I, I, I was looked at. I looked at prices. OK, yeah, you're I a real one for that. I really appreciate babe, it. I set it up. Do you remember? I'd be like, mm-hmm. OK, we have showing at this time, at this time, at this time. And I put them by like location so that we would make each one on time. Like an Amazon drop off. Like they go through city, through city. Through I city. had everything planned out. Right. Because I wanted Jake to make like a full on educated decision on like where he would 
and people took it as she thinks it's her apartment. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Is it for him or her? <laughs> yeah, that's that that's, shit raises my sugar till this day. Mm-hmm. Cause what what the fuck? Yeah, that's the tea on today's Jaddle Tea episode. I'm going to wrap it up right now because it's very late and I'm tired. we have a lot. She has to wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. It's just a lot of stuff going on. But if you guys enjoyed this episode, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you guys want more and we haven't posted, just watch our old ones. They're all bangers. Thank you so much for uh. watching today's Jaddle Team episode and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.